The Fisher Jets podcast is presented by WinBet. Betting is a team sport, but together at WinBet, Eric Allen and Bart Scott here at One Jets Drive. Joined by the J. Duzabo down in Florida. Is that an Emmy he got behind there? He just go, he just gonna flex that on us? Yeah, you see it. Are you covering it up, son? <laughs> hey, how about there that? There we go. There we go. I like the background now. He, he just polished it too. And <laughs> And we got the little uh, Bart Scott bobblehead still yeah, with us. Still looking in bomb. Yeah. <laughs> he don't like that. He wants a little bit of darker Bart Scott. Hey, well, I just need some melon. It looked like I got no blood going through my body. Again, we got to get you a <laughs> you little. Get no sun. We got to get no. you a little shot of vitamin D. Yeah, exactly. Uh, big time jealousy up north right now. Bart wants to be down in Florida, I think. It's bye week. I could just go ahead and, and call it audible, man. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I had to be here with my peoples. Uh, yes, I love it. Deuce. What do you make uh, the Jets being three and three and specifically what they just did to the Philadelphia Eagles who came into MetLife Stadium unbeaten Jalen Hurts career high, three interceptions, four takeaways and all. Yeah. EA, what a gutsy performance. You talk about being down your all pro corner, another pro bowl corner, uh, your third corner, who is the first outside corner yet. If sauce Gardner or DJ Reed should go down, you had all three of those guys out that game and for you to have a gutsy defensive performance where they were just stifling to Jalen Hurts and the rest of that defense. You know, a lot of people wondered why the Eagles didn't try to run the ball. And they tried to a little bit in the beginning with DeAndre Swift, didn't have much success. They did have some success with Jalen Hurts using his legs. But a kudos to, you know, Coach Albrick and the defensive staff for putting a masterful plan together, right? They literally put it on the defensive line. You want to lean on your best position group on the team, and that's exactly what they did. I mean, Bryce Southern, I'm sure we'll probably talk about him later, but I don't know if you guys remember EA and Bart. <laughs> there was two years ago, around this bye week time, they signed another defensive line, John Franklin Myers. Mm. Could the Jets potentially lock up Bryce Huff going forward this bye week and handle some business? I think it would be smart uh, for them to do that. But that Jermaine smart. Johnson, I mean, his second year ascension continues to grow. He was dominant this game caused an interception, caused a fumble slash interception. So essentially, he was credit, credited for causing two interceptions. So, I mean, just a gutsy performance. And I think anybody, any Jet uh, fan would have signed up for three and three with Aaron Rodgers at quarterback. But without Aaron Rodgers for the Jets to be three and three, it's, it's a great job, masterful job by this coaching staff and these players on this team. A.J. Brown got his part, but how were they able to do this with Tay Hayes up? Greg James. Yeah. I mean, we've seen Bryce Hall make contributions over the last couple of weeks, but it seems like it, no matter who's playing, this unit is so cohesive and everybody's stepping up to the plate. And it's crazy, right? Remember what the narrative was, was before early in the season. Oh, Joe Douglas and Robert Sala, his, their job should be on the line and all this type of stuff, right? I mean, they lost arguably the best quarterback of this generation or his generation, right? And now you look at the fact that you talk about the depth of being able to draft, but not just draft, be able to develop. Because whenever you call somebody from practice squad and he plays, that means that you're coaching him up mm -hmm. all year. They didn't, you know, he came here and, and you know what it is. Like everybody's here been not a starter and you're the backup and they say, okay, this is what we want from look team, but we want you to use our techniques because we don't want you practicing bad habits. So, this is their cover three, play it like we play it. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and that's part of your development. So don't think because you're sitting here being a look team that we don't expect you to be developing and getting better at our techniques, getting better at our communication. Even though you don't get the reps, that's why one of the hardest jobs in the, in the, in the league is being a backup because you don't get any mm. of the physical reps. You have to be able to develop from mental reps. And you can say that these guys did it and, you know, they played at a high level. And it's a tough draw whenever you get a guy like A.J. Brown. I think they realize just how big and strong he was when they come in there them little arm tackles, you know what I mean? Buyer beware when you come in here because he the can, man. He can embarrass you. And C.J. Mosley figured it out too. But, you know, that's a great player doing great things. But the thing is, whenever you have an upset, and I tell people all the time, every team in NFL has talent. Every team in NFL has good players. But at any time, a good player can dare to be special. And these, the, 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 the good players on the Jets decided to be special all at the same time when they needed it. Right, you talk about the defensive line, situational awareness, mm. being able to get you know hands on balls, tips, you know changes, you know what I mean, making him uncomfortable. And Jalen Hurts plays against good defenses, right? 
and he'll eventually play against Dallas, but I don't think he's ever played against a defense that feels like they have five guys rushing, even though it's four, allowing them to put guys in windows and making him be a high percentage decision maker early and often. And he did that for the majority of the time. But the four mis mishaps that he had was enough to be able to, to swing the pendulum in the Jets in the Jets fashion. Right? That first 19 play drive, which I still don't think he scored was brutal because mm. no way Very. you lay down. Anybody knows you don't simultaneously put the ball out and then lay on, lay on the ground. We know that if his shin is down, he's down. Right. So whatever. That that's, 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 a, that's a different story for a different time. <laughs> well, explain it to me. I don't even get it. I know it's a different story for a different time, but can, I didn't really get into it in the postgame show because we were talking all superlatives yeah. about what the Jets actually did, but – his body I was don't down. understand it. His, his body was down. His lower body was down before they extended it, right? Before he even extended it. Like, and if, you're, if your side of your leg is down, your shin and your knee, that's down. Right. So, like, mm -hmm. we know just by how his upper body was before he started leaning that his body was down before. So, we know his knee was down. Now, his thigh and his hip may not have been down, but we, come on, there's no way. It's just, it's just, yeah. that's just mechanics. Right, but they decided to call it because they probably said it was inconclusive. We can't see it, but we can see the ball. And I think you go with the call that was on the field. What, and, what and the call on the field was that it was Jets ball. Only the Jets get stuff like that. That's what I was gonna say. Okay, now everybody's quarterback gonna, gets every, clothesline in the Everybody's gonna face, call us homers cares. right now. But can we just address the situation? When I are they? Get, when are they gonna <laughs> get calls, dudes? Because what? we go back to the Kansas City when game. When Aaron Rodgers come back? Yeah, seriously. When are they gonna get calls? So, so I tweeted this last night. I, me and me and the cons were tweeting back and forth. And uh, anybody that watched the Buffalo game last night, the, the pass interference they called the second to the last play of the game, to me that was questionable with the game on the line. But the last play of the game, there's no way you don't call that. Agreed. I, I, I love Taron Johnson, but he mugged Darren Waller. Like that was an easy call to make. And you the can ref see the jersey pull. It. Yeah, like he literally pulled his jersey, didn't didn't turn around. You can face guard in the NFL, but if you face guard, you can't grab the guy. He grabbed Darren Waller and impeded him from putting his right hand from in the air. Yeah, yeah. So I tweeted this like, it's interesting in the league that good teams get those calls. Teams with winning records, right? And you see the Giants are struggling or right great now, great quarterbacks, so they don't get that call. So EA, your question is, when do the Jets start getting those calls? Well, I think people tend to forget when we were on that little win streak last year, I believe we went, what, seven and four. Yep. Jets were actually getting some calls, right? So, like, Bart, we always talk about it. And we kind of kid in the locker room. Sometimes you got to make your own luck, right? And you get some lucky calls if you're winning. Like, the Josh Allen, and I don't understand how this guy keeps getting rough in the passer calls. This is not me being a homer. But you're six foot five, 250 pounds. It's all cute and dandy when you're running down the sideline, stiff arm and DBs. Right. But, yeah, a defensive lineman or linebacker hits you, and it's just a good football play. You cry for a flag. Like, you can't have it both ways. And Zach Wilson has got hit in the face mask. His face mask has been grabbed. Mm -hmm. And he is yet to get a rough in the passer call. It's baffling. Hopefully, with that win last night, and the Jets can string some wins together. Hopefully, that, that pendulum swing that Bart always talks about, hopefully some of those calls are, you know, swinging in favor of the Jets. Well, what you have to do, too, also, is your staff, you put all those plays together, and you send it to the officials. Mm -hmm. So that right. way, in the second half, you know, they, they feel inclined, like, okay, yeah, we got we to gotta be better. Right. Like, we missed it. Like, listen, we're not blaming y'all. We just want to let y'all know y'all missed these, and we get it. But these are clear files that you guys missed. You guys need to stop missing as many on our side. If, if, if you're going to do that, then you need to miss them on the other side. Real, real quickly. Yeah, be consistent. A.J. Brown, the catch up the sideline. Definite catch? Mm. I mean, so, it was called a catch. So. That's what I'm saying. So, like, to, to Bart's point earlier on the 19-play drive, they usually always lean towards what they call on the field, right? right. So, the Jalen Hurts, it was crazy that it goes to commercial break, and then all of a sudden we come out of commercial break, and the Eagles have six points. My thing is, you said you have different views, and that's what the, the broadcast was saying. They have different views they can look at. Why can't we all look at them? Yeah, they ain't show us one. Yeah. If you call, <laughs> exactly. If you call that short of the, of the goal line, that's the call you should have went because it was not conclusive whether or not he was up or not. With the A.J. Brown call, I don't mind it because they called it a catch on the field and it could have went either way. Like, he definitely had his his, his uh, knee in bounds, right? The question was, did the ball move before that elbow went out of bounds? Did he reestablish control? So my thing is, I think, and Salah talked about this earlier with the Sauce Gardner penalty versus Kansas City, it's just consistency from the refs, right? If you call it like that, call it like that the whole game. 
If you were going to overturn the Jalen Hurts thing, you should have overturned the A.J. Brown catch. If you were going to say that Jalen Hurts wasn't in the end zone, you should have said that that was a, that was a good catch by A.J. Brown. You just got to be consistent with your calls throughout the game. What can the Jets be with Zach Wilson paired up with this defense? Because don't you think that this offense is going to continue to evolve after everything that they faced early in the season? Well, first of all, uh, Morissette is a, is a weapon, right? He flips the field. Yeah. They gain yards like that. I, I look at him as gaining yards on offense, mm. right, especially if it's just defense. Um, the defense is great, right, uh, and, and they've been playing well. But when you look at the yards they give up, and I thought they did a better job in making the necessary adjustments. Usually it takes them two or three drives. I think they got all all two, three drives in one drive, so then they're able to make make mm. the adjustments. You know, but, you know, they can't start slow, right? And then you look at the yardage that they give up, you know what I mean? They can't give up as much yardage as they've been giving up. If they want to be considered a, a dominant defense, I don't know if this is true or not, but for, as far as the numbers rankings – I think they rank like 22nd, right? Right, But, you know, we know what our eyes tell us. The eyes tell us that they're, they're elite defense and they're playing tough opponents. So when they play these other opponents that doesn't have Mahomes, that doesn't have Jalen Hurts, that doesn't have Josh Allen, I expect those guys to be held to 150 yards total offense with the turnovers. Right, mm. like what? How Cleveland looked? Like, in my opinion, Cleveland is the best defense. And You've I been said, saying that for and, a while and, I, and I said on get up, I said San Francisco won't score 20. And they didn't score 20 mm -hmm. because, like, those are bullies on the block. And with Dalvin Tomlinson yeah. in the middle, they're good on the outside and they stout in the middle. And um, Jim Swartz, even though I don't like him and we've had our, our altercations, <laughs> I, he's one of these guys that when he comes out and he goes anywhere, like Vic Bangio, like Rex Ryan, like Wade Phillips, turn they, they turn it straight around. So Sala said after the game he thinks the offense is really close, dudes. Do you see that too? Yeah, I, I definitely see it. I think the things that we talked about, EA and Bart, in regards to the red zone offense, it's just about finding what Zach really likes. And I, and I think you go back to the interview that uh, Aaron Rodgers had with Pat McAfee and, you know, when Zach was hitting on all cylinders in the red zone versus the Kansas City Chiefs, it was because Nathaniel Hackett called the plays that Zach really liked, right? And we saw the confidence grow in that game. And Bart, you know this, when you start making plays, like everything becomes easier when you're out there. Everything slows down. I mean, that back shoulder hole shot um, versus the Kansas City Chiefs to Alan Lazard, that wasn't just good football. That was elite football. That was elite placement, mm -hmm. right? So if Zach Wilson continues to build confidence, right, we see he has the arm talent. It's all about him stringing some completions together. And then when he gets in, into the red zone, I think, Bart, and this is just from the outside looking in, right, sometimes he's just – too careful because he doesn't want to turn it over because he knows we're getting three no matter what. But you know this, Bart, you got to have confidence in the red zone because the yeah. windows are so much tighter. The field is condensed, right? So you can't be timid in the red zone because if you're timid with the ball, that's when you usually turn it over. So I think, one, they definitely got to run the ball better in the red zone. It was good for Brees Hall to get in the end zone last week in the red zone. Whether Philadelphia let him in or not, we don't know. Um, the way I look yeah, at the All-22 and the way it was blocked up, that safety wanted no no smoke with him anyway. So I don't think he was going to score with that anyway. But they got to be consistent in running the ball in the red zone to make it a lot easier for Zach Wilson down in the red zone because he did a massive job versus the Chiefs. But since then, the Jets have really struggled in the red zone. I mean, if you look on that play, I, I chuckled a little bit because he showed his arm talent, but Rucker was wide open on a double post because the backside <laughs> safety didn't come over. So Rucker doesn't have anybody five yards. You're talking about the Lazard touchdown. Yeah, 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 the Lazard Ooh. touchdown. But um, to, to, to follow your point, I think we should get more Rucker in, in there too because he's the best. Yeah. You know, all the big runs come off of him. But, you know, just Correct. because he doesn't have the resume of a great pass catcher, that's because he played on a college team that had Alave, Garrett Wilson, Marvin, you're like, yeah, like yeah. of course he blocked Studs. it. Yeah, of course he blocked <laughs> it. Like, we don't, want, we don't want your 15 when we can get they 60, right? But, like, he, he, he's a complete tight end, and I think it's time yeah. to unleash him as well and start giving him opportunities and maybe some of the C.J. Ozama top of stuff because he has a little bit more speed. And uh, I think he's, you know, just as big. He's a little bit bigger. I think he has great catch radius as well. It's time, you I know. I think he's a, a better second. run blocker too right now. Yeah, too. yeah. It's a better, it's a better, you know, it's time to start unleashing some of the young guys right in the second half. Like, and to do that, you got to find uh, space for guys. And, you know, sometimes people are like, oh, well, you know, you want to play the young guys when people get hurt uh, or the season's over with. 
Mm-hmm. Now it's time. Also, you can play the young guys when they've proven that they're ready to take the next step because they mm-hmm. have live legs, right? Mm-hmm. They don't know what they don't know, and they bring some electricity to that side of the ball, some creativity. You know, I want. I, I really want to see Izzy, man, because I think if you get mm-hmm. him on some of these zone stretch runs, you get him to the second level, like when they sent Xavier Gibson in motion, which set the which you know we broke you down the other the other week. You know, with you know we saw what that did. Could you imagine Izzy being there? Yeah, that's the same thing. Brees can't run them all, so like I said, they're gonna have to have some tough decisions. But the season takes its own personality, and the season's taking a personality. Hey, we need some more electricity. We have more speed in the garage. We got to pull it out. Jets fans, we're in our final push, and the clock is ticking. WinBet is giving you a golden opportunity to win VIP prizes for the 2023 season. The WinBet Green Room is the most exclusive space at the stadium with all-inclusive food and beverage, lower-level seats, and appearances by Jets legends and celebrities. New Jersey customers, all you need to do is wager at least $100 on WinBet Sportsbook or Casino. For New York customers, all you need to do is wager at least $100 on WinBet's Sportsbook. The best part? You get an entry for every $100 you wager. Speaking of speed... What do you guys think about the defense and how fast it plays and with Quincy Williams' development because he's one of the fastest players in the National Football League well, at his position. He's probably the fastest well, linebacker in the league. Well, it's one thing to play fast, to, to be fast. It's nothing to play fast. And to play Ooh. fast, you got to be free mentally. Mm, right. So correct. also, you know, what I see is I see him communicating. I see, you know, I broke down the play maybe a couple of weeks ago when they had to five, they had to pass five routes and they pass them all perfectly against Kansas City and Mahomes had to hold on to the ball. That's that's not about speed. That's about mental speed. Mm. And that's where he was lacking in the development. And now you know, he's able to have pre-snap communication and post-snap communication. And he's starting to understand how many times did we see New England try and high low him, right? They tried to – when they had to have it, they decided to pick on him, and he chose right, right? He passed the route to CJ and came underneath on the drive route and was able – he didn't take the banana in the tailpipe. You know, we uh, – uh, Singletary just called it the it pop, right? Don't, don't, don't go lick the it pop because if it's something in front of you, something behind you. But he understood how to pass it. And that just comes <laughs> with maturity. And I think the fact – you know, the, the Jets right now – ought to be, feel very fortunate that they paid him early and not late because they got him mm. tied up because that would be a hell of a negotiation if they signed him to a one-year deal because at this point, a lot of guys would be trying to buy for him to be that guy. That, that guy. And I think the fact that they let Kawan Alexander go let him feel free that he's not going to be a, a situational guy, a first and second down guy. He's going to be out there the whole time because his speed dictates that he should be out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Deuce, Jets started 7-4 and four last year weren't able to finish Sala at the end of the year, put in everybody's lockers t-shirts that said finish now post by you got 11 games left. So a ton of season left. But when you look at the AFC now and you watch the jets and their body of work, whether Rogers comes back or not is one thing, but this team still, I think is one of the top seven teams in the AFC whether it's Zach Wilson at quarterback or Rodgers at quarterback. Yeah, I think you look at what Joe Douglas has done to really put in the best roster possible to have success. And Bart, we talked about this earlier, the depth. I don't think people understand how big depth can take you in a season, right? You got to have great depth. And I think we've seen teams that have got hit by it. I think Miami Dolphins are one team right now. They have a four by 100 meter relay team on offense, but on defense, we've seen they've, them struggle at times because of lack of depth, right? They've lost some key players on the defensive side of the ball. So I think Joe Douglas has done a really good job. You know, you can't account for losing a Hall of Fame quarterback, right? But what you can do is once you bring a Hall of Fame quarterback in, you can use him to help get guys behind him ready. And that's what we've seen. We've seen the dividends pay because of Aaron Rodgers helping Zach Wilson. I think him being back in the building has been a masterful thing for Zach Wilson and his development. As soon as Aaron Rodgers came back, Zach Wilson took a a major step in this offense. So I think Joe Douglas has done a really good job. We talked about the defense being a top 10 defense. And you talked about Quincy Williams, and I just want to talk about him a little bit more. I mean, I think the thing that really has separated him this year, Bart, you talked about it, was his mental jump this year and understanding the playbook and understanding the scheme but also his pass coverage. You talked about it last year when Quan Alexander was here. Quan was coming in on third down. 
Right now, Quincy might be the best coverage linebacker in football. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't say that lightly because Fred Warner is a beast. But you've talked about it. I think teams saw film last year, Bart, and you talked about how they tried to high low him, try to give him rub routes. And he's step for step with guys. He's a step ahead. And you know with his speed, that's great because with the speed that he has, if he could mentally jump ahead of the play, he can make plays on the ball. Like that wheel route versus Kansas City versus Noah Gray, before that would have been a big completion. But he literally was 40 yards down the field on that guy, Bart, and a great PBU to get the Jets off the field. Like that's where he's taking his game to the next level. We always talk about development, right? And we talk about depth. Second-year players, I think this is one of the best Jets draft classes in history, and that was before Jermaine Johnson took this step that I told everybody he was going to take this year. Like, he's playing out of his mind right now, and I know a lot of people were questioning the way Carl Lawson played last year with seven sacks coming off an Achilles. Where was Jermaine going to fit in? Well, he's he's decided that he's going to be one of the main guys on defensive line. And again, he was responsible for two major turnovers last in this last game versus the Philadelphia Eagles. So you talk about Brees Hall, you talk about Garrett Wilson, um, him now, Sauce. right? You talk about, yeah, exactly. So you talk about having a great draft class. And then you talked about a guy, Jeremy Rucker. I think he's going to be great down the stretch. I think he's going to be the future at the tight end possession. He was in that draft class too. So he's going to be a pro about hitting he a reminds me of Dallas Goddard. Goddard. Max Mitchell, he, he, he's yeah. starting for your right tackle. He reminds me of exactly. Goddard. He reminds me of Dallas Goddard. Yeah. That's, yeah. That, that's exactly who Rucker reminds me of. He does. He does. So, I mean, you talk about having a special draft class last year. You talk about the depth. You talk about a championship type defense. And then Zach building confidence week in and week out. Definitely, yeah, I think this is a top seven team. And we know this, Bart. At, at the end of the day, anybody can win and lose on any day. But as long as you got a championship defense, you have a chance. I love the way the schedule sets up for the Jets. But uh, briefly, was this the most impressive win in the Robert Sala era? This is his third year here. Man, this is tough. I mean, going into Pittsburgh last year, you know, I know what that environment is all about. Green Bay, um, too. They're rocking yeah. in Green Bay against Aaron Rodgers. True. You know, this one was probably the best because of everybody being injured. Mm. You're only having four corners even up. Yeah. And the fact that you lose, you know, you already lose, you know, AVT. AVT was there for the other ones. And then, you know, the bottom fell out. So I, I would probably put it up there because they, they faced something that they didn't face with the other opponents. And that's the most physical football team, one of the most physical football teams in football. I mean, you have to say top three, you know, top four physical teams, San Francisco, you, you have to go uh, Philadelphia. Yep. You know, you can make the case that, you know, went healthy Cleveland because their defense offense lines are crazy. And then, you know, mm. you can put Probably the Jets Detroit. in there. Yeah, Detroit because of their offense lines, defense lines, Baltimore. And then, you know, so they they face a they face one of those squads. And that's that's a that 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 acts that forces you to answer different things as a man, not just as a football player, because you gotta continue to take that and say it's gonna be one of those days where I know what Monday's going to be like, and Tuesday's going to be like. It's a lot of guys that hopefully are going to these oceans to sit in that salt water, get that, get that pain out. <laughs> Listen, Lane Johnson went out early in that game. That was big. That, it, it, it was. That was massive. It, it, and the Jets took it. Yeah, because all those J- – Jermaine Johnson, I don't know with Lane Bryan <laughs> Johnson, if that, those were there. So, but it's the Jets – have too. But the Jets took advantage of it, but I, I thought that was the interesting matchup because, you know, the Jets' defensive line could bully people – now they're going to face one of the top offensive lines, if not the top offensive line in football, and they got after them, dudes. Yeah, Kelsey, they got after yeah. the Eagles. Yeah, Kelsey didn't do Kelsey stuff. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if, if you look at it, that's a measuring stick, Bart, right? We always yeah. prided ourselves. Whenever we're facing a top offensive line, we're tired of hearing about them every week. Like, let's let's go show everybody why they should be talking about us and not them. And I think that's what the Jets D-line did. And, and – to your point, Bart, that was a major loss losing Lane Johnson. He's not just the best right tackle in football. He's probably a top three tackle period in football. So when you lose a guy like that who's been a mainstay for a guy like Jalen Hurts, you know you get that extra tick when you know you got Lane Johnson out there. So, you know, Jalen Hurts could be, you know, take his time with the football. But when you put the backup in, it was literally like blood in the water. I think you heard Jermaine Johnson talk about it, right? He kind of even mentioned Marshawn Lynch after the game saying – you know, when I saw the look in his eyes, I know he didn't want the smoke. He said, I'm going to go through his face and see how many times he can take it. Is he going to be willing to do it play after play? Because I saw the look in his eye. So I'm going to take take straight speed to power to him every play. And you saw it kind of wore him down. And then you get the switch up with Bryce Hoff. 
beating you with speed on the edge. So I think the Jets did a great job of mixing it up, not just putting Huff on that side, letting Jermaine go at him too, giving him two different looks, right? And he really struggled for the Philadelphia Eagles to back up right tackle. And that's what you should do. I mean, the, 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 the Eagles did it to us. They knew we had some injuries at corner, so they threw the ball out to A.J. Brown. Mm-hmm. That's what good teams do. You take advantage of, of players when you when you can in, in that situation. And, and guard, too. <laughs> Flex Kyle's yeah. like, oh, I'm just bull rushing. Yeah, literally. Oh, yeah. Poor poor Wes, man. My, my guy Wes was, was struggling in there a little bit. Well, speaking of that, <laughs> man, it, it feels like deja vu all over again up front along the offensive line. And you guys talk about injuries happen throughout the National Football League and go up and down every roster. But the Jets continue to shuffle up front along that offensive line, Bart. Yeah, and it's uh, particularly the right side that's that's been struggling. You know what I mean? The right side has been getting the brunt of the, the injuries. Uh, but hopefully after this bye, Dwayne Brown can come off IR and he's going to have to, you know, get in where he fit in, right? And so, sometimes when you when, when you get hurt, it opens up opportunities. I think Becton deserves to stay there. Um, he's going to have to come back for much needed depth. I mean, he should be a guy that's played at a long enough time where he can play guard or right tackle, whatever they need. And that's really what this team should all be about. But you want, you want Becton definitely to stay at left tackle. I, I don't want him to go over there and have to yeah. learn, relearn footwork okay. on the other side and learn the place when he's starting to get some chemistry with Tomlinson because that's important, right? You, Those three are the, th- the three that's been playing with each other hasn't moved. So they have chemistry and they've, they've seen stunts. They've passed stunts. You, Becton passed a great stunt last uh, yesterday, mm-hmm. right? So, so why you want him to go over there and then have to communicate with somebody he hasn't worked with? Let's, ke- let's, let's keep something consistent. Right. Uh, pre-game, what did you guys make? Uh, Aaron Rodgers out there on the field, no crutches, <laughs> throwing the ball around. I mean, yeah, he got yeah. some good meds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the, the fact that, like who said, maybe, maybe um, AVT goes there too and, and he can, they can rehab together and he can feel comfortable uh, with, you know, because of the depression of trying to uh, rehab. And um, Aaron Rodgers, you know, let's see if he can continue to defy the odds, right? And, you know, I think yeah. his presence and flying back, you know, boosts everybody up. And Solid said, hey, if he wants to stay on the sideline, he's Aaron Rodgers. He can make that decision. And he's made that decision. Whatever he's doing is is working. And let's see if it can progress. And, you know, all I worry about as a teammate is let's make sure we're doing our job. So if he is ready to come back, he's coming back for a reason. Mm-hmm. Three and three, heading into the bye. A lot of people said before the year, even with Aaron Rodgers at quarterback, yeah. the Jets – might struggle to get to this point where they're three and three. Some people looked at it before the year said two and four. Uh, we got to get out of here. But dudes, what do you think about the way the schedule sets up? Giants. That's Charger, a road Chargers, game. Chargers, but it's at Chargers, Jet Life. Monday Chargers night. Monday night at Vegas. Mm. I mean, it sets up nice, but Bar, we know this. Anybody can be beat on They're any looking day. At us the right? Same we saw we're two at undefeated teams go down Sunday. Um, the Giants were one bad call away from making the Bills three and three. Yep. So literally, you have to strap strap it up every single Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Saturday, whatever day of the week you're playing, because you never know Friday. Um, what could happen. Uh, we saw the, the Texans go out there and beat the Saints, right? So like. Every day you need to strap it up and be ready. Uh, there's no gimmies on the schedule. Now, from a totality standpoint, does the schedule look a lot lighter than it did for the first six games? Yeah, from the outside in, outside looking in, it does. But, Bart, we talked about this. Injuries is a real thing. The Giants will probably be as healthy as they'll ever be before they play the Jets. Yeah, Jets they'll probably get Thomas weeks. back. And they right? just gave – The Chargers gave are coming off a of bye. Yeah, Chargers coming off a of bye. We're about to see what happens with them versus the Cowboys. Um, so, you just never know. Like, you, you got to take it one game at a time. Uh, the bye, usually hate having it this early, but I think it's right on time for the Jets because of the injuries that they have have occurred when at the cornerback position, at the offensive line position, and, you know, Garrett Wilson was kind of banged up a little bit. So hopefully this, you know, week and a half, he'll be back to his old self uh, after the bye week. So I think this, this bye comes out at a really good time after an emotional win, right? You, you want everybody to sit back, self-scout, get healthy, like Bart said, go sit in some salt water, get healthy. And to get your mind focused for that crosstown rival against the Giants. Uh, good job, fellas. Uh, Bart Scott, he's a man in demand. He's going live on radio here in a moment. Jets head into the bye 3-3. Three three. Great seeing you again, dudes. 